Hey everybody, Tag Life Done Free. Hey, uh, you know, I've got a lot of requests about uh, the house, how I built it, how I built it in pods, why I built it in pods. And so uh, I thought today I'd just run you through the house, uh, the process of building the house, uh, share lots of pictures of uh, the process along the way. So uh, I hope you'll join me and, uh, you know, hope uh, you get something out of it. So let's check it out. So this was some of the process to building our home. I am not a professional, and this is for entertainment purposes only, yada, yada, yada. Our journey began with the idea that we would actually build a Quonset hut to store our equipment in. I'd purchased a used building at an auction for $500. You want to see how we turned a $500 Quonset hut into our home? Keep watching. So I began with pouring the footings. This would be exactly what I needed for my 20 by 30 Quonset hut. After that, I ran the plumbing because, for some reason, my wife really wanted a bathroom at the farm. Once the plumbing was run, we poured the floor. This floor was 3,000 PSI concrete with steel reinforcement and fiberglass reinforcement. The last picture is of the pad for the powerhouse. As I have mentioned many times before, I always have something ready to pour concrete so that I can use the extra in something I need instead of just pouring it onto the ground. The problem was um, that I used a building that was bent, and so the struggle to get it together was real. So, what did I do? Well, I did what any mildly stressed man in my situation would have done. I tied a chain to it and ripped it to the ground. So, B was not as excited as I was for a fresh start. Some people just don't like change. But prior to taking it down, I had spent three weeks trying to get it right. And as you can see, I had five sections up after those three weeks. Now I still have this building and at some point we're gonna use it for something. So I called the lumber yard and ordered some wood. If you look here, those are the five sections. And so I destroyed one, two, three of them. These two might still be savable, um, but I've got it piled up. I built a bunch of scaffolding, but uh, again, you know, down it went and I guess off to the next gig. So the lumber yard uh, dropped off loads of building, building material. And before you knew it, we were off to plan B. And this is the beginning of pod one. I've talked often about how I like to build in pods because one, from a financial perspective, I can do it a little at a time. And um, it just allows me to do it instead of trying to bite, you know, the whole thing off in, in one swing. I spent some time in my younger days building houses. This is a process that I'm super comfortable with. So we began by standing the outside walls. I installed the joist on the second floor and began building the trusses. Now take special note to these tall side walls. See these right here on both these sides right here. So I do this on purpose. With a tall side wall, I can continue to add these additional pods without having to tie into the roof. See tying into the roof line is much more expensive and you have to um, you know, worry about the greater risks of leaks. So this one pod would be part of our tiny uh, home and the thing that we would live in until we built the homestead. One of the challenges with wood construction is once you start to build, you kind of have to race to get it weather tight before damage occurs. And I don't want my investment uh, to deteriorate because I've got weather sitting on it. So I would house wrap it uh, as we would go, which is this stuff right here. And I just, if I got a side done, I'd house wrap it. Now behind this, what you don't see behind the plywood is there's windows cut in, there's doors cut in and stuff, but I'm just not ready to open it up yet because again, I'm living in pods. Um, up here on the roof, this is the second floor of the first pod, just started on uh, building the trusses up there. And this is a process because there's another board that goes up underneath it, uh, you know, et cetera. So pod one's coming along nicely. We're installing windows, house wrap and ripping. Uh, in order to protect my investment, um, I built a back deck instead of scaffolding. So you see this right here? See how there's a deck on there? A lot of people will just build scaffolding to get up. I like to build decks. It uh, costs a little bit more money, but uh, in the end, I think you end up with a deck, and that's pretty nice. I also started on the greenhouse. You know, uh, the boss seems to think that uh, she likes to plant, and it was spring, and it made her feel better, so I did it. Uh, finally, I also began to build a powerhouse, and I just have this little corner picture here. And again, this was just used out of scrap material and kind of stuff that I had left over. Um, I knew power would be coming soon, so I needed to get that project knocked out as well. 
Uh, we continued to close in the first pod. Uh, we added siding and paint. And the last picture, you can see uh, the garage door. This was used to park my equipment through the first winter. Eventually, this is a bedroom. But let me just kind of walk you through it. So that's the greenhouse. This uh, back it ended up in an enclosed porch. Right now, there's windows in it and all those things. It's just not in this picture. I wasn't that far along. We use this room here. It stores my rainwater catchment system uh, equipment. And um, also, we store firewood in there in the winter. Um, yeah, doing paint. Again, that's the greenhouse deck. Started to build the stairs coming down right here a little bit. Um, not fully done yet. This is what the deck looked like at the top. Now, I want to make a little side note on these rails. I just use cattle paddles. I think they look nice. They're very inexpensive to do. Um, nothing's going to fall through them. You know, these are little four inch by four inch or six inch by six inch squares. Uh, kind of stepping back a little bit, you can see the progress on the siding, on the greenhouse, on the back deck, and then obviously out here at the powerhouse as well. So the greenhouse construction is moving along. Uh, I worked on it here and there when I had enough uh, scrap material. You know, most of the greenhouse was built using either leftover material or scrap material. Uh, the windows, these green ones right here, these came from a local house remodel. And you know, if you guys go and find siding companies that do siding and windows, they often throw these leftover windows in the trash and you can just pick them up um, for free. <clears throat> this top glass, you can't hardly see it up here, but these, this is actually three eighths inch tempered glass and four by eight sheets that came out of a hockey rink. I bought them for $50 a piece, incredible steel. What's so nice about them is you can get up there and walk. You know, one of the things I have to worry about in my climate is snow load. You know, how well will it support uh, the weight? And so this was just a great deal uh, for the homestead. These little windows down here, they're all the same size. I'd also found some eighth inch tempered glass at an auction uh, a couple hours away. I gave 50 cents a piece for them. I bought a ton of them and they will ultimately ended up doing the entire greenhouse. Uh, some of these little oddball shaped windows, I had to go have specialty cut, but there wasn't very many of them. And so it was uh, pretty inexpensive. As winter began to set in, we turned our attention to the kitchen and the power. Now, as usual, as you can see down here, B is on vacation. She thinks that polishing concrete is work, and but I think it's vacation. Uh, the picture of pod number one with all the lights on, this top picture right here, this is the day that I actually got power turned on. That is the first night with actually having electricity uh, inside of pod one. It was an amazing feeling. Uh, it still gives me immense pride. Uh, if you look through here, this was just kind of as we were building the kitchen. Um, I built all these cabinets myself. Uh, there's a sink right over there. The refrigerator ultimately goes here, and you'll see that in some in some future pictures. This little stove right here is the wood stove we used to build the whole pod one. Now, now there's a kitchen queen, you know, big old stove in there, but uh, this stove gets moved around to wherever it is I'm working. Uh, down here, kitchen's getting a little closer. As you can see, the countertop's actually made of concrete. And this picture is Bethany actually polishing the concrete um, I don't know what grit she's using there, but she polishes all the way up to a thousand grit. And this is this buffet line right here is actually what she was working on in that picture. So we also began working upstairs on the two bedrooms. Uh, we will call this home until the other pods were built. Uh, you can see the progression of the fireplace. So this is, you know, kind of getting it put in, just starting working on hooking up pipes getting it all concrete boarded in, uh, ran a couple outlets and uh, you know a TV jack so that eventually we could put a TV up there. Down here, just a little place to store some wood. Uh, this is that back deck out there, um, back behind. Here's the room a lot more finished. Um, I've put some rock on the fireplace. You can see there's a fire going on there. That's Panzer. Um, oh, look at that. There's Bethany lollygagging again, still on vacation. Uh, this room here, this is a bedroom, but um, I use it kind of for a playroom and, and um, you know, I love kids. And so I built a, a little playhouse out of the closet. Um, they seem to enjoy it a lot. They can get in there and play store or whatever it is. Sometimes I'll go in there and play with them and order stuff through the window and, you know, they'll give me a cheeseburger or whatever it is. So we chose to clad the ceiling and some of the walls in cedar. Uh, we even did a lot of the closets and after two years, I can still smell it. It was a lot of work. I mean, you look at all that cedar and all those pictures. It was a lot, but it is absolutely beautiful. I can look at it all the time. I can smell it. Uh, absolutely one of my favorite places to be. And this is throughout pod one. Um, every single ceiling and some of the walls, like the walls, I did the closets, for example, up the stairway, which you can see in this picture. 
So spring broke. We began working uh, back on the greenhouse. I installed a 750 gallon rain catchment system. So the gutters come into this, um, then it comes down and it feeds in uh, to the greenhouse, which is ultimately what it's for, but it's also hooked up to one of my toilets. So I can use gravity fed rainwater um, for one of the toilets. Takes no electricity, takes nothing. Absolutely work, you know, work on its own. Um, I also began building the stairs. You know, they said, uh, you know, build curved stairs. It'll be fun. Yeah, that was uh, quite the challenge to get them to turn um, like that. But I really did uh, enjoy, enjoy the challenge. And if you're going to build a back deck, might as well have a slide. Kids run up here, slide down, run up here, slide down, run up here, slide down over and over and over again. And as you'll notice, as we're going through pictures, you'll find that I have play things for uh, the grandkids on pretty much every corner. And at some point I'll remove some of them, but I do that because I can be out there working and they can be out there having fun. And to me, it's called working smart, you know, up in B's garden. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, some of those pictures, actually a trampoline right between the two gardens. And that's kids can get up there and play and, and we can still get some work done. Well, the nice weather is finally upon us and it's time to start pod number two. This will be our living room. It is important to mention that this entire project was completed with screws. Um, I'm not a big fan of building with nails, except for that in finished nails. Um, I pretty much use screws for everything. Um, as you can see in picture number four, which is this one right here, see that tall sidewall I was talking about earlier? See how I can attach that building right to that? And then once you sheet this, it's really just a matter of papering it um, putting, you know, the roofing on and putting some flashing on and it really stays pretty tight. It doesn't leak, uh, you know, very easy. Um, again, this is inside the living room as I was building up the trusses um, from a little bit away. Um, as you can see this picture here, there's these stairs. Those stairs ultimately go up in pod number three and they'll end up on the second and third floor of that pod. These tall two by fours right here were the beginning of the fireplace um, that ultimately is in my living room. Here's the the trusses. Now this is what's called a scissor truss and uh, I use plywood on them because that plywood has just got incredible strength when you when you put it together like that. These flat boards in there allow me um, and they're exactly four feet so a four by eight sheet of, of uh, drywall fits just there perfectly but it allows me to hang whether if I wanted to do lights or, or uh, ceiling fans or whatever gives it a flat surface. So as I moved on to pod three, as you can see from this picture right here, Bethany is still on vacation. Uh, we quickly finished up the inside of pod two, which is what you're looking at. This is the living room. Um, kind of a special note, you know, I did not put a single rock on this fireplace. Bethany did every single bit of it. Now she did make me come in here and pour, you know, the concrete uh, mantles and, and some of that stuff. So. This is a picture kind of before we started the drywall. Um, we put insulation in, you know, we run all the, any piping that we need to run, uh, run the electricity. As you can see, this is the exact same wall in those two pictures. This is just ran, um, you know, after the drywall and that kind of stuff's in. Um, this is Bethany working on finishing up the fireplace. Remember the concrete mantle? So I poured all of these mantles on the floor right here. All this, it's all concrete. I like working with concrete. It's very durable. It'll hang in there. It does like to crack if you don't do it right, but um, I like it either way. Uh, this is a picture of the living room um, at about what it is today. Um, fairly finished, not 100%. Uh, these cedar beams actually were, there were trees that were cut down and um, sat for a good, oh, probably 18 months before I put them up. Um, and then we went out and, you know, cleaned them up, sanded them down and uh, you know varnished them and stuff so that they would uh, you know look pretty for a long time this picture is a picture of the kitchen looking into the living room and if I remember i told you there was pictures that had the, the uh, refrigerator and stuff like that in there here's some stairs going up to uh to the other bedrooms so off to pod three uh this would house the laundry room another bathroom two more bedrooms and an office um started with the stairs you can see in this first picture it's right back here in the back and just began to work my, work my way up, come up the stairs. Here's the floor to the second, or the, the floor to the second floor. Um, there's a bedroom back here and a, a game room in here. Um, now, B, B also instructed me that while she was on vacation, which she seems to do a lot, that we needed a pop out um, over the front door. So I built this little pop out right here, and you can see here's where it looks a little more finished. Um, this picture is just a view off the top, um, looking out out at the front of my property. 
Um, as you can see, the second floor of the pod, number three, is about built. Uh, picture number three um, shows the roof going in. Right so here's a gable end and doing the trusses. It also shows the start of the chimney. So remember those boards that were sticking up. I'm beginning to ply with them. And as I get into level three, I'll be able to come up here and finish this. Again, this is just looking out. Um, this is on level two. So they'd be up on top of this right here. It'd be, sorry, it'd be right here, heading into uh, level two. And that's just a view from up there. Um, I like those kind of things. There's times I'll just sit down and watch it, and you know, because it's just so pretty. So the third floor is going in. Um, this is going to be my office, and this is where I'm sitting right at this very moment. This is where I film uh, most of the videos. I call it the crow's nest. What I love about it is it gives me a 360 degree view of the entire property. So like when B is out, uh, working in the garden and I'm trying to get work done or whatever it is or, or you know grandkids are out playing or whatever it is I can keep an eye on uh, pretty much everything if you see in picture number five the tall sidewall so it's the sidewall right here okay I haven't built it yet but this will pod four will attach right to this and this is going to ultimately be my master bedroom out here like I said I haven't built it yet um, I will get on it but these tall sidewalls are critical you can't see it but down there, right about where my laser pointer is, there's actually two water lines poked out of the wall. And that's so that I have hot and cold water over there because I'll also put a bathroom over there. Um, so really all I had to worry about is stubbing out those water lines. The drains I'll put in when I pour the pad and connect to the, the, the septic system. Um, other than that, it's just really leaving yourself enough room uh, that you can build easily. Oh, one other special note before I change this, this picture here is a very uh, magical moment in uh, the tag and B relationship. So this top wall right here, the day we were standing these up here, um, the wind was blowing and the walls are, you know, shaking back and forth. And my poor wife was crying her eyes out. She was scared. The walls were moving. You know, and I kept telling her, you know, B, just go down. I'll take care of it. Just go down. And, but she didn't. She hung right in there. And uh, we ended up putting them all up and uh, nobody got hurt. And um, But it was a very proud moment to see her fight through those fears you know none of this was easy for her she don't have any background in any of this but what she does have is perseverance and will and um, it's taken her a long way so picture one shows the fireplace chimney as you can see it right here that we're trying uh, you know to get finished see that little access hole right there you can also see it in picture three right here too i left this hole open as we were building all of this so that I could kind of move in and about and I could get up here and flash this and I could you know work out here just gave me easy access uh, in and out but as you can see we're installing windows we're putting the roof on uh, picture number four uh, continues to show Bethany on break um, and the last pictures from the third floor looking out over that back field So while B was on vacation, she decided she wanted a large bay window on the second floor. And so if you look, see these two by sixes, if I remember right what they are, they actually go through the wall, both of these, and they sit inside this wall over here. And then there's a series of blocks in there that kind of keep them from, you know, tilting by putting pressure on them. And then from there, I put these angle boards in there, right, against this header back here, so that if it pushes down, it's pushing back into the wall. So you can see the progression, like in this picture, um, it's not all in plywood. I don't have the roof built here. I'm working on building the roof. You know, I've always, uh, as a young kid, always wanted a castle. And so I have a tendency on this project to build a lot of those things. And you can see it in some of this trim work um, that I do. Or as if you look in the top of some of these pictures, you see the little things poking out up there. I call them corbets, but um, we call them well, wangs and chubs. But um, so she wanted one. So I built one. This final picture, you can see kind of looking back at the house, we've about got it closed in. I've got the roof on everything. I've got a little bit of paper still to put on here, a little bit to do up front here, but uh, we're almost ready for siding. It's really coming together. Um, I caught B on break three times during this short period. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, the last picture is probably my proudest moment uh, building this home. Um, it's something I'll remember forever and, uh, you know, it's, again, it's something I just give her a ton of credit for. So if you look at this picture right here, that is my wife putting rock on the fireplace. And guys, I didn't put a single rock on it. In this picture, three, she is three stories off the ground um, putting that rock on. You look in this picture right here, see that little black dot up there? That's her. That's three stories off the ground and that's my wife placing rock on the fireplace. And I'm going to tell you, she's tougher than most men that I know. 
So by, the, uh, by this time, we have the house weather tight, the siding's on, the windows are on, the roof is on. Um, the picture with the little deck right here shows again that I would prefer to build a deck than scaffolding. So I had to get up here and side all this, right? I had to put the siding on, I had to get up there, I had to run the fascia, I had to do all of that. And it was just uh, so much easier, in my opinion, to build a deck. I could put my saw out there, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, scaffolding, it'd do it a little bit cheaper, but not a lot cheaper. And then you got to take it all the way down. For me, I just got to put rails on and, you know, and then I get a deck. This picture here with the lights on, this was the day that I turned the power on to that third pod. So like up here in this office, you can still see the scaffolding on the fireplace that she was working on. Here's some pictures of the construction of inside pod three. So um, this probably won't be very popular, but this is actually my staircase going up into the crow's nest. It's super steep. Um, I didn't want to make it any longer because it just takes up so much space and it's just my office. I'm pretty much the only one up here once in a while I'll be but that's where it goes. When you get into the office, I built this desk, um, this top. I took two slabs of cedar and some epoxy. You can't see it, but there's some rocks down through the center of it. And this right here is the desk that I sit at. It's what I'm sitting at right now talking to you um, overlooking uh, the property. And I can watch deer and, you know, all kinds of animals. Turkeys are out there tonight um, back there. It's really nice. This is on the second floor. This is the inside of that bay window that I built. Um, this room looks like I'm in the middle of drywall. Drywall's mostly hung, got some stuff to do on this side, but this is uh, just a bedroom. So here's an aerial of where we are today. So if you look, greenhouse is up, powerhouse is up. Um, this was pod one, this was pod two, which was the living room. This is pod three. You can see that little uh, bay window right there. Uh, a couple other things. See this trench line right here? So this is when I trench propane in so that I could run the backup generator which is right there. And then I also use it to run the on-demand hot water heaters. And I have three of them. There is uh, uh, two of them in the house on, on two different pods in pod one and in pod three. But there's also one in this building right here. This is uh, Bethany's shop, is the front half of it. The back half of it over here is a processing kitchen where she can go in there and process all of her goodies. And, you know, I built the processing kitchen because um, one, she needs a place to put her things too. You know, it's not just you know, me needing a shop, you know, she's got her own tools and her own garden stuff. And so it gives her a place to put them. The processing kitchen, the motivation for me beyond making her happy was just simply that, you know, she likes to like uh, render lard, for example. Well, I don't know if you know what, you know, three or four roasting pans sitting on a countertop rendering lard all day smells like in your house, but I did not want that. So I wanted to make sure I gave her a place to do those things um, outside of the house. You can see the chicken coop over here. This is actually before there was even chickens in, obviously, because there's still grass. Um, my solar panels, you know, I built them in different sets just based upon, you know, what I bought along the way. Um, I use these kind of to store stuff under park lawnmowers and stuff in there. But, uh, you know, since that time, we've built some other things, but you can still see I haven't built pod number four. Um, but I will certainly get it. So there's so much more to do, uh, but we are living full time at the farm and we are absolutely living free. Well, everybody, thanks for watching and, uh, you know, thanks for hanging in there and uh, viewing, you know, all the pictures and the process of building the house. I'll uh, continue to shoot video as I uh, start pod four. And, uh, you know, like I always say, go challenge your life every single day to live a little freer than you did yesterday. You know, break those chains of mod that modern day slavery and, you know, just try to get freer and freer and freer. So anyway, until then, um, I'm Tag. This is Life Done Free. Hold the line. Don't give an inch. Tag out.